All right, here we are. Back for my weekly infusion. This is a self-infusion of uh, alpha-1 proteins. And the reason I do this is because I have a rare disease called alpha-180 trypsin deficiency. Um, and so what happens is my body does not produce the alpha-1 protein properly and it gets stuck in the liver and causes liver damage in some people. But for me, I got have emphysema. My liver is fine at this point. And the reason I have emphysema is because the alpha-1 protein <clears throat> is an anti-inflammatory. And so with anybody, everybody that um, <clears throat> breathes smoke or dust or any kind of contaminant, you know, aerosol spray, your lungs, when that gets into your lungs, your lungs are all like, hey, this ain't cool, this is bad stuff. So it sends out, it calls out to the the brain and the brain produces this um, neutrophil elastase and it sends it to the lungs to clean the alveoli and get any bacteria off of there that could have happened from the <clears throat> the smoke or the, you know, whatever came into the lungs. And so this uh, neutrophil elastase, these little cleaners are destroyers of tissue. And so if left to their own devices, they'll just keep working and, and eating away at the alveoli, um, which are very important to us because that's where the gas transfer happens, where we take a breath in and it opens and brings in the oxygen and that transfers into the bloodstream and then you breathe out and the carbon dioxide goes out. So in with the good, out with the bad. <clears throat> but this uh, neutrophil elastase, what it does is it destroys the elasticity of these um, alveoli. So you can breathe in the oxygen, but you know, get rid of it. It doesn't snap back and blow out the um, carbon dioxide. So it just kind of sits there. And so that's why we're short of breath is that we're not getting rid of the um, carbon dioxide. Contrary to most people thinking that when you're short of breath, you don't have enough air. Basically, you've got too much carbon dioxide in your system. Anyway, <clears throat> the alpha-1 protein, what I got, there's a bag full of it over here, which I'm going to infuse into myself. I have a video shows when I uh, prepped a bag and such. So if you want to watch that, go ahead. It shows the medication. It's a uh, prolastin from Griffles. It's uh, derived from plasma, which has been donated by some very generous people and they take the alpha-1 protein out. So this alpha-1 protein is what goes up and neutralizes the neutrophil elastase. So <clears throat> my body produces it in, in an um, insufficient quantity and quality, so I don't have this to go up there and stop the little neutrophil elastase. So what's happened is, is emphysema which is not cool, I'm 55 years old, and um, have 40% of lung function, and, and, and it's, you know, deteriorating, but this um, infusion slows down that process. So, <clears throat> the problem is, is that my body, um, actually that the alpha-1 protein is created in the liver, and so my liver, creates it misfolded. So basically it's inside out. And so when it goes to leave the liver, it gets stuck. And that's why some people get cirrhosis. My liver's fine at this point. But <clears throat> other people like me who might have abused their lungs with smoke and whatnots um, get emphysema. And you know, I was not a heavy smoker, and I shouldn't have the emphysema that I do. Um, 
And my doctor should have known that, you know, 15 years ago when I was first starting to have issues, but they didn't test for this disease. And so, um, you know, pretty, got pretty bad lungs at this point. So what I do is I infuse this, um, let me show you, these vials of alpha-1 proteins. Um, this is prolastin made by Greffels. Um, there's four different companies that make this stuff. And, you know, one of their main things is, is um, uh, plasma donation centers all over the world. <clears throat> anyway, there's all kinds of med medication made from plasma. So if you are able and, and willing, you know, it's not a bad idea to, to donate your plasma. So I do this weekly self-infusion. Most people don't do self-infusion. They have a nurse do it or they go to a facility and have it done. But it was an option to do it myself. So I'm all like, well, heck, I'll do it myself. It's a lot, you know, save time, like tonight. Um, you know, I don't have to waste my day going to a doctor's office, making appointments with a nurse or something to come to the house. You know, I just do it at my own time. So, figured which vein to use today. You know, I can make it easy, just use one of these big suckers. But some people are watching this because it's kind of gross and they're hoping that I'm going to blow it and there's going to be blood all over the place. And it doesn't get that bad, but it does get messy sometimes. So I'll shoot for something a little a little different. I've gone that one. That one's not bad. This one's pretty skinny. But I'm, I'm pretty good at getting that one too. Those are too skinny. This one's a pain. That one hurts when I blow it. This one, I don't know if I've ever gotten that one. It looks tricky. I don't know if I want to try that one. Yeah, what the hell? We'll give it a whirl. You know, so look at the hands here. It's my left hand. I'm right-handed, but I'm able to do either way. I'm ambidextrous when it comes to doing this thing. So anyway, let's get going. Um, so when we decide, we'll try this one. What the heck? So this here is a tourniquet for people who do this self-infusing thing. So I put this thing on. Try to get that all pumped up good. It's these alcohol wipes. Let's see if you're seeing it okay. You should be able to see this good. There we go. Get the whole area clean. I'll give it a couple. We, you know, we don't want infections. Because this is something I'm going to have to do for the rest of my life. So... I have to preserve these veins the best that I can. Cause, so that's why I don't use the same one every time because heck, you know, I just use that one every week if I could, right? These big fat mothers, but there's scarring that happens. Um, I'm very good at this, so I have minimal scarring. You know, I probably use that big one right in the middle there. Um, dozens of times and you can barely see any scarring on there. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's have at it. Wish me luck. All right, got everything I need. Yeah. All right, this is the tricky part. Poke the, poke the skin. Doesn't really hurt. Try to find the vein. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Slide that in there. All right. I see blood. Blood is good. Got a little piece of tape. Put it over this. Because yeah, hitting the vein is tricky. But here's the trickiest part that I had to learn. Because I got to get this hose onto there. Um, nurses, they could just hold you right here and poke the thing on there. It's not a big deal at all. You know, no fuss, no muss. The blood doesn't come sh pouring out. But I have to do this on my own, so I have to be quick about it. So I pull out this 
needle and try to get that in there before it gets too messy. Not too bad today. And we'll check it. Check, see if we got um, a good, ah, look at that. Perfect, that's good. I'll push that in there. Oh, it feels kind of cold. It's a nice evening here. Live here in Santa Rosa, California. All right, looking good. Sorry, no blood and gore, but it's it's this easy. So if you are, you know, on the fence about doing this, um, self-infusion, some people, actually, they, you know, there's a, quite a few people that do actually do it. And there's some people that are thinking about it because, you know, I, I meet up with a fellow, we call ourselves alphas, that have this alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. And, um... And we talk about what we're doing and such. And and when I say I do self-infusion, people look at me a little sideways and go, huh? Is that like a thing? I, you know, I tell them, my friends that are nursing students or even doctors or nurses, and they're like, oh, that doesn't sound real. And I'm like, no, it's a thing. And it actually saves money, time. You know, I like it because it saves my time. And my time is precious to me because my lungs are all jacked up. They're not going to get any better. Um, you know, I might not have the same amount of time left as most people. You know, I will be looking at a lung transplant in the near future, maybe a couple years, depending on how things go with my lungs. Um, and Lung transplant is not a guaranteed. It's like a, um, it's a risky sucker. So doing that could shorten the life. And so there we go. We got a good flow going on the drip bag up there. Everything's going good. So, hey, thanks for tuning in and watching and listening to my rattling on and babbling. Um, thank you, and I'll catch you next time.